God certainly has the ability to intervene to stop people from causing each other suffering, so why doesn't he? Apologists claim that this would undermine human free will, and free will is so valuable that the suffering it causes does not outweigh that value, so Yahweh does not intervene. Well, except when he does. In the Bible, God frequently intervenes in order to counteract people's actions so that there's no suffering. God sometimes intervenes to prevent suffering when one person tries to hurt another person. Well, if he does that sometimes, why doesn't he do it more of the time? Job's answer is, you can't ask the question or you'll be squashed in the dirt. And suffering caused by humans is not the only kind of suffering. But can't we ask the question why? The other thing is that humans doing bad things to humans may be able to explain the Holocaust, but can it explain other things? Can it explain why in, uh, in the mid-1980s there was a mudslide in Colombia one night that uh, came down a volcano side and, and uh, came over four villages and killed 30,000 people in their sleep one night? Can free will explain why there's a tsunami that kills 300,000 people in one fell swoop? Can free will explain why there are earthquakes in Haiti that kill probably over 300,000 people? We'll never know the total. Uh, mysterious ways, or uh, who are you to question an all-knowing God, or uh, he'll make up for it later, etc., etc. And there are other solutions in the Bible. Solutions, for example, that you find in the book of Daniel, or in the book of Revelation in the New Testament. Solutions that indicate that, in fact, God is not causing this problem to one another, to, to people. God isn't causing the problem to people. He's not punishing them. He's not testing them. Uh, he's not doing it for some unknown reason that you can't ask about. It's not God who's doing it, and it's not people doing it to one another. According to the book of Revelation and the book of Daniel, what's happening is there are evil forces out there in the world. There are evil forces, the devil and demons and powers and principalities that are against people and it's the forces of evil that are doing things but God is going to intervene eventually and overthrow the forces of evil and set up a good kingdom here on earth what created these evil forces why does Yahweh allow them to run around fucking up everyone's shit if he can stop them why is he waiting to do it eventually what the fuck is the point of that in other words things might be rotten now but they're going to be fine later if you just hold on for a while Revelation thought that this was going to happen very soon. Uh, one of the key uh, points of the book of Revelation is that if you hold on for a little while longer, God will intervene. This is the view of a lot of the writers of the New Testament. The Gospel of Mark says, some of you standing here, talk, Jesus talking to the disciples, won't taste death before they see the kingdom of God has come in power. This generation will not pass away before all these things place. This will happen very soon, but it doesn't happen soon. And year goes by after year and decade after decade and century after century. And is this really a valid hope that the kingdom of God is going to come sometime next week? Apologists have devoted a lot of hermeneutic contortionism to try to explain why this passage doesn't mean what it actually says. They say that the coming of the kingdom of God just means the crucifixion of Jesus, or that the term this generation doesn't really refer to that generation, but rather Israelites as an ethnic group. These interpretations are such a stretch that you either have to believe that what the scriptures profess is wrong, or that Yahweh chose to deliver his message to the shittiest, most opaque writers in all of Judea. It's because I've seen the reality of God and people around the world can attest to it that we say absolutely there are answers. You know, it, it reminds me of, you tell a joke, the whole room is, is laughing and one person's not laughing. It's not because the joke's not good, they didn't get the joke. There were lots of people laughing in Jay Leno's audience when he hosted The Tonight Show. Jay Leno sucks. Is the fact that he has an audience full of people laughing at his jokes evidence that I just don't get them? This is an argument ad populum. Brown is saying that the answers in the Bible to why there was suffering are sufficient because lots of people see them as sufficient. And if you don't see them that way, well, that's your problem. So I'm not going to dismiss the answers if, if some have not found them adequate. And I understand that. I'm sympathetic to it. These pain issues are very real. But I'm not going to dismiss the answers that have been satisfactory to hundreds of millions of people who've gone through hell. If those answers are shit, why shouldn't you dismiss them? Here, look at this. L listen to this. Uh, it was Viktor Frankl said this, Auschwitz survivor. 
The truth is that among those who actually went through the experience of Auschwitz, the number whose religious life was deepened, in spite, not to say because of this experience, far exceeds the number of those who gave up their belief. Janet Willis and her husband Scott lost their six youngest children in a freak accident because of some illegal driver. She said, 14 years later, today I have a far greater understanding of the goodness of God than I did before the accident. I turned to God for strength because I had no strength. I learned about him. He made sense when nothing else made sense. If it weren't for the Lord, I would have lost my sanity. What would my dear friend Bart say to her? How does the fact that she had spiritual experiences after her son died in any way answer the question of why she went through the suffering of her son's death in the first place? Thanks again, Patreon people.